2024, yes, Deja and I are wearing matching outfits. Yes, yes we are. You guys are great. Yes. Thank you very much. We call each other before we play. Do you? Yes, we do, of course. Hey, listen. Yes? Uh, great, uh, amazing story. A grandma who was 79 was on a solo hike. Okay. Okay. And she broke her leg. She stepped in a hole, broke her leg. Okay, so in, far, this is not a great story. She was in Washington State, but ended up being rescued by a young U.S. airman who managed to carry her on his back for hours down wow. the mountain. Oh, my there God. Go. <laughs> U.S. Air Force Airman First Class Troy May, who was hiking with his fiancée and a friend, were among those at the lookout who heard Bannister's cries for help. Uh, they had called 911 that they realized it was going to take four to five hours before rescue cr crews could get there. So the 20 year old airman opted to hoist Bannister on his back instead. Well, I've got news for you. <laughs> to the fiance, he's a keeper. That's, that's a guy you marry. You know, it's yeah. like always like, what is marriage material? That guy is marriage material. The guy yeah. that will carry you down a mountain when you break your leg. And the uh, grandma was named Ursula Bannister. Mm. She was an experienced hiker, um, but she ran into trouble. Uh, on a, it was a three-point mile hike to High Rock Lookout. Mm. Love to hike. Mm -hmm. yeah, gotta love to be hike. careful. Yeah, gotta be careful yeah. for sure. Um, so, you know, <laughs> there's there's an a absolutely crazy story. So, you know that song... You know, the Macarena, everybody's danced to it. Everybody's been forced to recreate that dance. Every wedding, every, yeah, it, it, we all know it. this up is Gen Z and Millennials have claimed that their childhoods are ruined, ruined, after learning what the lyrics to the Macarena really mean. What? I must say that I don't know the lyrics at all in Spanish or English. All I know is Macarena, Macarena. Yeah, so apparently, do you know what it's about? I don't. Uh, you don't? I don't. Okay. So it seems that uh, the song is in fact about a young woman who has a threesome with her boyfriend's best friends while he's away. Wow. <laughs> Hence the lyrics, hey, Macarena. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> wow. lyrics here in English. I won't uh, bore you with them, but I highly recommend looking them up after the show is over so you can have that in your head for the rest forever. of your life. Yeah, forever. Yeah, forever. I mean, they played that at baseball games. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, I've, got, I've got some news here. Tell me. We have the uh, official unveiling of Art Moore's star right here on our studio floor. Um, <laughs> That's where Art's stool. Uh, that's where Art's stool was. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and um, and now we it. just have that stool sample there. <laughs> Are we going? Now will we rip up the piece of faux yeah, linoleum we with the floor out and bring it down to, to the, the new Art studio. studio? Great. Yeah, yeah, I would think that Art would be here for the unveiling of his star. <laughs> All right. In other news, um, woman left with a broken nose and missing teeth after attempting the dirty dancing lift with boyfriend. Oh. Mm -hmm. They were in the pool, uh, Flo Bragg, 
That's her. That's her name. Was uh, was having a holiday in France when she decided to try the famous lift from the 1987 1987 movie. Wow, made famous by Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze. That's where it went wrong. Oh. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's where, and this is what. She, yeah, that's how she looks wow. now. Yeah, I wonder if they're still dating. <laughs> you know, as I recall, we were on a family vacation. Okay. In Italy. And we were attempting the dirty dancing. In the pool? Yes. Do you remember that? I don't. Well, fortunately for you, I have a video. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, not my ribs. You have to get me here. Oh, it's a big part. I know, but you're going to have to do it. Hey, Can't lift me? Yes, I want to like bags of sand. One, two, three. That's it. I still don't remember doing that. I know you don't remember doing that. I remember it like it was yesterday because you were, you were doing these crazy military workouts with our boys and your dad. Yeah. And you were lifting bags of sand that weighed like hundreds of pounds over your head. Yeah, I think you And could... then when it came to me, you were like, I oh, can't no, possibly <laughs> lift you out of water into the air. No, because the water, it was shallow. So I was bending, I was in the squat. So I didn't have my full back and proper foundation set. I was literally sit, like sitting in a chair, but with no chair. But you were in a full squat lifting bags of sand over your head. It's, uh, whatever. <laughs> But I you did get it. I did get it right here. We yeah. did it. We did it here. I think yes. was it last year. Yeah, we yeah, did yeah, it yeah. here. Oh yeah. <laughs> you see, I was standing. I was standing. I had my foundation. <laughs> I had my Cuban heels. Shoes. Mm -hmm. When you're like you had that wig in your eyes. Yeah. When you're yeah. like when you're floating in water, you have no you have no support. Yeah. It wasn't because you were heavy. You're not heavy. <laughs> well, I think that video begs to differ. That I'm much heavier than I look because after watching him lift hundreds of pounds of weights <laughs> over his head, and then I was like, oh, this is going to be a piece of cake. If you'd have jumped you're off the side, if you'd done from the side, and if I was standing, I would have I would have. Totally you would have caught me. Yeah, I would totally been able to do it. <laughs> It was totally. like Samson Easy. with the hair. Easy. Yeah, uh -huh. it was Samson. The with hair the gave hair, me my right? power. The hair did. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> hey, look, I want to give a shout out today. Do you remember that incredible woman we sat with at the Disney Legend ceremony? Yes. Martha Blanding. Yes. She was like the, oh, <sighs> the OG of Disney employees. She is um, the longest, uh, I'm, I want to get it exactly right. She uh, began her career with Disney in May of 1971. This personal journey through her eyes uh, tells of an iconic black woman in a changing America in the backdrop of a loving and resilient American family at the center, groundbreaking magic, a black woman's journey through the happiest place on earth. Uh, Martha was inducted by the Walt Disney Company at the official Disney Legends, along with fellow inductees. Now listen, this is where I get a mention. Harrison Ford, Angela Bassett, John Williams, Jamie Lee Curtis, Frank Oz, James Cameron, Miley Cyrus, and me. That's good. It's very exciting. Yeah, it is. She was amazing. She, oh, was amazing. she was amazing. And you know what bums me out is mm -hmm. that she gave her... I, I gave my speech, and then they take you backstage to actually put your hands in the cement. And so while that was happening, she was, she was giving yeah. her speech. And when I came back to my seat, it w I was fully aware that what I had missed she was, amazing, was yeah. incredible. Yeah. Like, everybody was moved. She was so extraordinary. Yeah. And, um, missed it. I missed it. <laughs> I missed it. So You were hanging out with the others. I was hanging out with the others. <laughs> um... Falling asleep too fast. It's a slumber speed trap. Mm -hmm. We all know that the frustration of tossing and turning, uh, unable to get to sleep, but falling asleep too quickly might also be a sign of trouble. Here's the thing. What's the trouble? You're, you're too tired. 
you're exhausted. So what, do you, what, what are they saying? They're saying that you should like resist falling asleep too fast and like stay up so your variable time. You should be getting more sleep so you don't Just fall go to sleep. Quick. Just go to sleep. There, I, I get that little n note on my, my bed tells me if I, have, if I fell asleep too fast. I don't care. I want to fall asleep. I don't want to toss and turn and ruminate. When you ruminate, ruminate. You, you're not falling. When you can hear your, 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 your blood pressure on the pillow, when you're, we can hear your heart beating, that's right. when you know you're going to have a hard time sleeping. Just go to sleep. Who cares? <laughs> you're somebody that never ruminates. No. You don't ruminate. Every now and then I do. You just don't know about it because you're sleeping. <laughs> but I do fall asleep easily. Guys. And my, be my bed says you're, you're falling asleep too fast. I'm like, ah, I just want to go to sleep. Nobody falls asleep faster than Mark, particularly um, during a, a group production meeting. Parent-teacher conference? Parent-teacher conference. Nobody's sleepier than Mark in a parent-teacher conference. Ballet? Any ballet recital? Huh? Um, musicals? Yes, musical. Uh, musicals? One in particular. Goes... One in particular. Uh, -oh. uh Which is the one that Kyle was in? Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera. Mark slept his way uh, through Phantom of the Opera twice. I only, I only went once, but it felt like twice. <laughs> <laughs> only went once. Well, what was the other one you went to and you immediately fell All asleep? All of them. <laughs> but there is one musical I won't fall asleep. Oh, I know. We're going to talk We're about gonna it. We're going to talk about it We're going to talk about it later on yeah, on the show. Yeah. We've got a big one today. Florence Pugh is here. Our buddy Jake Shears is here. Jake and before we go any further into October, let's take a look at Mark's September mug results oh. for the game. Okay? okay? Are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. Mark, your September averages. I've got a very bad feeling about this. Your September average was 0. .476, Ooh. which was also your average in August. Oh, really? Really? Yes. Two months in a row? Two months Two of less than 50%. Months. Your career average is now 0. .554. Oh, man. Okay, better than a joint. <laughs> Come on. You know, maybe we should, like... I don't know, change it up a little bit. Make this easier for you? No, we should change it up. Maybe I should, maybe we should do this. We should just try it for a week. Mm. I'm going to pitch something to yeah. you, okay? Where I try to stump the caller. Mm. I give two statements about me, and they have to figure which one, which one is true. Mm. So that way the audience gets to learn a little bit more about me. Mm. Okay, we should think about that, okay, Gelman, for yeah, like for sweeps. Special, what is yeah, sweeps? For special event. Event. sweeps? Special event. Special event week. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It is that time. Yeah. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to play. Stop. Stop. Concentrate, Mark. Let's go. I need to concentrate. Let's say hello to Karen Fuller from Chesapeake, Virginia, who watches the show on WVEC. Good morning, Karen. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing good. Um, and I like your idea, Mark, on the new game. Yeah. I wish it was today. <laughs> we could play it. We could play it. All right, listen, you've given us two statements. One is true, one is false. I have 60 seconds to decide which is the truth. And if you stump me, you'll win this. And that. Here are Karen's two statements. I have a single handicap in golf or... I once came first in a fishing contest. All right, let's talk about the fishing contest. What was the fish? How heavy was it? Well, it turns out there wasn't a fish. It was at a, one of our local lakes. I, was, I think the age group was up to 16. Okay. And everyone was just catching little spots, so no one kept it. So when we came in, they had prizes to give away, and so they came up with games like a watermelonating contest. But I won the largest bubble gum bubble contest. Ah, okay. At the fishing contest. At the fishing contest. Okay, huh. got it. Okay, and what's your handicap in golf? Nine. Whoa. How long have you been playing? Twelve years. Is that, <sighs> is that good? That's really good. Mine's I still don't have a hole in one yet. You'll get one. You'll get one. Uh, mine's like 25. <laughs> oh. I'm not a good golfer. I don't know what that means. That means 25 shots over the par that they give you for each hole. Oh, my God, you're terrible. I'm horrible. <laughs> So Are you good on the he's... green? Are you a good chipper or a putter? What's your, what's, what's your specialty? Um, putters, I mean, chipper's not my best. I'm pretty good at putting, but Kelly, Mark shoots about 100. 
He shoots about a hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, between uh, ninety-five and one hundred and five. That's where I. That's my sweet spot. Yeah. And so I'm not what good. should it be? I mean, a nine, like eighty-one. About Seventy-two. Seventy-two. <laughs> She's nine over. That's eighty-one, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm usually in the low eighties. I, I would kill. I would kill to be in the low eighties. It took a long time. Can you teach me some stuff? Um, I'm still taking lessons, actually. Oh, you take <laughs> lessons. I don't take lessons. Uh, I probably should take lessons. Uh, it helps. It helps. Okay. Here's what I think. I think Karen goes to the golf course quite a lot. I think she takes out her clubs. She just swings nice and easy. She hits them down the fairway. She gets on the green, and she has a great time golfing. I think that she is a single, single handicap in golf. I play about three times a week in the nine hole and the 18 hole and then one day with my husband, but you're wrong, Mark. <laughs> you are wrong, Mark. She told me to. Yeah. yeah. Woo! I, I still, love it. I don't understand the gum thing, but you know what? Yeah. You congratulations. You you beat me. You beat me. You you win the mug. You win the T-shirt. Now let's see if we can win you a valuable trip. It's time for great getaways travel trivia. Purnell from Decatur, Georgia. Great job, Deja. Deja, let's spin that wheel. See what else Karen's playing for. All right. Okay, you're playing for a trip for two to the Club Barbados. Seven days and six nights in an oceanfront room. It's all inclusive. It's a prize valued at $9,000. You have 20 seconds and only one guess. Good luck, Karen. All right, Karen, here we go. We've had Joshua Jackson on the show. In what sports film series did we say Joshua starred when he was young? Oh, that's um, Friday Night Lights. Oh. oh, the Mighty Ducks. The Mighty Ducks. The Mighty Ducks. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Karen, but listen, there's still exciting news. You'll now be entered into our grand prize drawing for a 13-day voyage to Antarctica. It's a prize valued at $42,000. And now you and a lucky member of our studio audience will each receive a Roomba vacuum cleaner from iRobot. So please pick a number between 1 and 129. Just celebrated our 40th, so let's go with 4-0. Four 4-0. Zero. Four zero. Four zero. All right. All right, Karen, thanks for playing with us. When we return, Florence Pugh is here. Stick around. Still ahead on Live, we'll talk with Jake Shears. We'll open up the inbox to hear your comments and questions. And coming up, she's an Oscar-nominated actress whose work includes Little Women, Oppenheimer, and Dune 2. Now she stars in the new romantic film, We Live in Time. Please welcome Florence Pugh. <laughs> I do have many people making it happen. In no, the no, I've seen lots of pictures of you, candid on the street. You always look chic and Thank gorgeous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so you are an actor with um, a voice that I find so appealing and sexy. It's the voice I think I have in my head. <laughs> you do? No, I, I don't. You do? I'm, you just went lower than you I'm do. I'm going to try. Oh. <laughs> Were you born with that voice? Yeah, I always sounded like a middle-aged woman who'd smoked <laughs> packets of cigarettes a day. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I do. I've always had a very low voice. Sometimes mistaken for a man on the phone. No kidding. Wh which I don't mind. It's, yeah. quite, it's quite a good trick. It can work. <laughs> um, and I hear you have a, a confusing laugh. Yeah, it's Tell just to pre-warn people because my la I have a funny um, breathing system and my tubes grate when I laugh. And so when I laugh, I do sometimes sound like a dying goose. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just important to put that out there. Like, before. I want to tickle you and make that laugh happen. <laughs> Kind of that. <laughs> <laughs> so do you like do you have any you work so hard you are in every film I love um, do, do you have downtime do you get any free time to decompress I do I have to be very specific with with how quickly I I force the downtime yeah <laughs> so how do you do it I love I love cooking oh. it's my favorite thing to chill me out what's your go-to Cooking. just chopping just chopping. you'll find me in my kitchen with a chopping board chopping Mince, mincing Mincing, I could do some mincing, mm. but mainly chopping, chopping and tasting and eating. That's my thing. That's it. Well, I come from a very foodie family, uh -huh. and my grand's an amazing cook, my dad's an amazing cook, my mum is also an amazing cook. I have to put her in there before she tells me off. But um, I, yeah, I grew up with good food, and so it's just, it is my relaxing thing to do. What's your favorite, like, you know, say I'm coming over. I love this game. I'm bringing my cigarettes and my scotch. Oh. <laughs> We're going to train my voice to be <laughs> Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> I was desperate to make you it happen. It. Yes, okay. So, uh, it's like Little Mermaid yeah. when, uh, <laughs> when <laughs> Ursula gets it. <laughs> You're like, I have it now. I have it. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm coming over. What are we going to eat? Like, just as a, just a snack. Okay. Not well, a first full of all, thing. what time is it? It uh, doesn't matter. Who cares? It does matter, because I'm going to make you a martini, if so. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so let's say it's martini time. It's martini time. Yes. <laughs> okay. Martini time. We're going to do a vodka martini, and then I'm going to make some, like, maybe just some, some crostinis. Oh. Yeah. Crostinis with some just... Get the tomatoes all sweaty and some goat's cheese. Oh. Oh. Easy finger food. Then we're going to do a cheese board. Oh, oh. my gosh. And we're just going to chat some more, and then it'll be martini two time. Two. Oh, my gosh. Well, after all the do cheese the and, and the, yeah. yeah. Do it the most. Do after it. three, you're under the table. <laughs> and then after it's probably... four, you're under your host. Ooh. <laughs> Dorothy Parker. I didn't like that. <laughs> Dorothy Parker. <laughs> what is your guilty pleasure as a foodie? Guilty pleasure. Okay. The things that really, really make my eyes go golden is like the Biscoff Lotus filled donuts. Oh. You know, have you ever had one of those? No. Oh my what? God. Amazing. Where do I get that? I do, honestly, I have no idea, but you, it, when you come across them, you need to buy seven. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And destroy seven. them and eat yeah. them. So you just come across them. Yeah. In random... and whenever I find them, or yeah. whenever I find donut store, do donut donut stores, yeah. uh, selling them, I, I do get a few. They're amazing. That and borzan. I could I can literally eat an entire loaf of bread with borzan. You know the cheese, cheese the garlic. Yeah. 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 Yes. I've mm -hmm. demolished those. We love a loaf of bread and a cheese. And a cheese. Yeah. yeah, right? The, the softer and the stinkier, the better. Yeah, and then a good crust. Mm. Great crust. Not too, so the, not too crusty. Oh. Though, where, where but you wanted to, but you hang wanted... on. How fun are those bruises the next day? Yeah. Because, <laughs> because you know you've had a good meal. Yeah, but you're younger than we are. <laughs> us, <laughs> couldn't us even be replacing a tooth. <laughs> yeah, we, we may wind up in stental surgery. Oh, right? bless. Okay, um, well then don't do that. You also have a thing for knives. Love knives. Not in a creepy way. Like, it's not like a fetish Like kitchen thing. knives. Kitchen knives, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think it's because whenever I go around people's houses to cook or when I go to stay or when I'm moving across the world to go and live anywhere while I'm doing a job, all the knives that they provide are absolutely crap. Like, they're really, really dull. dull. Yep. And actually, you can you cut yourself way easily, like way easier when you've got a dull, a dull knife. knife. Yeah. yeah. So I always take I take knives, or I gift people knives. So if I've ever given oh. you a knife, maybe we'll have you guys. You come over. <laughs> <to our laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe you can sharp, sharpen yeah. our knives. Yeah. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. Oh. Well, I try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about working with Andrew Garfield. Stick around. Tomorrow on live.
That's a scene from We Live in Time. You start with Andrew Garfield. Uh, it's one of the rare occurrences where you're actually using your own voice. Both of us, yeah. I mean, it's shocking to me. I, people are going to think you're putting on a British accent. People already do think that I'm putting on an English accent. I guarantee <laughs> after right. this interview, I'll receive messages being like, stop doing that fake accent. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> so tell us about the movie. What's going on in the story? Oh, my goodness. I, I shot this amazing movie last year, and it's, it's a about this couple over the space of 10 years and all of the trials and tribulations that they go through. They um, get pregnant, they give birth, they um, receive awful news about her um, getting cancer and they are basically just trying to hold on to as much time as possible. It's about the simplest of things which is love mm -hmm. and um, it's just such an important movie to come out right now because I think there's a lot of sadness and mm. darkness in the world, mm -hmm. and, and ultimately, we just need to be reminded what it's all about, which is to love and be loved. Tell us how they meet. Yeah. That's a false love. How did they come to... Oh, the most normal of ways. A very simple meet-cute. She ran him over. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How you meet all of I your... I love when all <laughs> but you two have a natural chemistry, but I, I was saying this backstage, you have chemistry with a, a doorknob, <laughs> you have chemistry with a windowsill, oh. you have chemistry with, I mean, it, it, everything, a mushroom, you have chemistry <laughs> with everything. Well, that's very, very good. But the two of you, you have an undeniable chemistry. Did you feel that right away? Yeah, it's funny. We've been asked this question all the way through mm. the press tour of like people wanting us to explain mm. what our chemistry is. Ultimately, I don't really, we don't really know what chemistry is other than the fact that you've got two energies that are working together and he's such a talented actor and I've always admired his work yeah. and when I saw this movie opportunity of whether I would do it I just was so unbelievably thrilled to know that I could have that opportunity working with him in this way so I think when you have two people that are completely invested in being great for one mm -hmm. another um, I guess that's probably what happened, but we had such an insane experience shooting this movie and creating this life with these lovers. Um, and it's just been really, really wonderful to talk to people about it and hear how it's affected them. And I'm so excited for audiences to watch it. Yeah. We so, so let's welcome the multi-talented Jake Shears. <laughs> I don't know you're a baby, though. We've yes, celebrated a, a lot of birthdays together. Yeah, happy birthday to you. Thank Yours you was very yesterday. Much. Thank you. Um, do you have a favorite birthday celebration for us? Because we, we usually celebrate we have, together. We do celebrate together. I'm, I think my favorite was we went to see Dolly Parton at the Hollywood oh, Bowl. Oh, my yes, gosh. That was amazing. And yeah. it was one of the best concerts I've ever seen. And I remember in the, it, I remember a moment... It was so special, you could hear a pin drop in yeah. there. It was just like her singing yeah. with a guitar, and it was just, you could, it was, it was an amazing concert. And, and didn't you, we felt like, we felt like she performed extra special because it was our birthday. Yes, really, exactly. she, Somebody <laughs> probably told her. But apparently yeah. that's how she always performs, yeah. every concert. Yeah. So, so you've been living in London. Been living yeah. in London, yeah, been living in London. And our daughter's there. Has she, does Lola she ever, is there. Does she ever call you? Does she ever, do you guys well, ever Lola have takes me shopping sometimes. Okay. And helps me pick Check out clothes. Okay. <laughs> she's good. She is really good, but I don't realize she's good until like six months later. Like, I'll, ha I'll bu we'll buy this thing and I'll be like, I'm never wearing this. I'm never going to wear it. And as time goes on, you know, yeah, stuff I get it. goes into my wardrobe. But she. Does uh, she ever come to visit you? She does. You know, when she, when she came to London first, she was saying that she was going to move to West London. Okay. And I was like, no, you've got to come to the east side. I live in Hackney. It's like cool. There's it's, um, the artists. And all it's like, the musicians are all there. All the musicians. It's right. just like, it's, it's cool. The west side is just kind of boring and stodgy. And uh, 
Yeah, she came to visit me. My door was bashed in because <laughs> somebody tried. I like I had a home invasion in the middle of the night. Yeah. Well, she called me. She <laughs> called me after that, and she's like, she's like. Jake wanted me to move to his neighborhood. She goes, and I, went, I, I got there, and the first thing I noticed is this door was bashed yeah, in from a yeah. home invasion. Yeah, I, so I, then she, she decided was like, I refused to her. let her live near where you were living. <laughs> I said, like, you can't live there. You gotta live in the stodgy place, the safe place. Did you travel this summer? I went to Brazil. Oh my I God. played a couple shows in Brazil. I played in uh, Rio and Sao Paulo. It was amazing. I'd never really hung out in Brazil before. Yeah, what are and it the was audiences like there? So fun, uh, really. You know, the the it, they were very. My audiences were very gay. Yeah. Uh, so it was a very handsome Brazilian crowd. <laughs> yeah. Good. Amazing. Uh, Perfect. But I, I I loved it. The parties were so good. I had a I had a great time. I went to went to. Rio, Sao Paulo, then I went back to Rio, and then I had to go back to Sao Paulo. So I was just back and running forth. back and forth between yeah, the cities. Yeah, it's a big country. It's a big country, and what, what blew me away was just the music. And it's just, they've got a whole different music industry there, and the amount of music. Uh, and it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. It was, I just yeah. heard so much good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're back in New York, back in New York. Um, your parties here were legendary. legendary. I lived here for almost 15 years. Yeah. How many times did and the police come to your house? <laughs> well, there was just there was one. There was one. <laughs> no, I, I, I would throw these big parties in my loft. I, I lived down in Tribeca, and they were so much fun. And I remember a buddy of mine was DJing. I thought, must it, like 200 people ended up in my house. That's a lot. Wow, that's a lot. We were having the best time, and I remember turning to my friend Jeremy being like, this is the best party in the world right now. And we're like, yeah! <laughs> and I look up, and suddenly, like 20 police officers are streaming <laughs> into my place. And I thought they were like strippers or something. <laughs> I was just like, what's going like, on? Like, what a great and idea. God, it was really eventful, and they kind of showed, they showed up at like three fifteen in the morning, so it was like kind of perfect timing. It felt yeah. like I was like, this was really exciting, wasn't it? Was anybody uh -huh. arrested, or was no, it just to but, shut the party down? It was like a club kid fire sale down on North Moore Street. Yeah. Um, we have to take a commercial break, but I want to talk to you about your exciting new project. <laughs> Đứng lên đây giống cảnh gì các bạn? Cảnh uh, Romeo và Juliet Romeo chàng ơi Đứng yên tao đánh nào Đó Rồi 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 Thì cũng không khó cho lắm Cũng được Chỉ có điều là lâu chết thôi Chứ đánh thì cũng được Ý có tiền có tiền kìa Khoan 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 Đánh nó xong cái thằng lấy tiền quá nha xong đâu tiền đâu tiền nằm đâu đây 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 khoan tôi lấy tiền hãy đánh tiếp nha xí 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 ạ
然后洗胃洗胃洗胃。嗯，我đánh nó văng lớp nhà luôn rồi。sao lên sao lên sao lên lớp nhà。rồi sao lên ta。vậy ví dụ mà nhảy xuống được không。chứ sao tao lên。để coi bay lên được không。À được 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 Rồi đó Đánh mấy cái cái nhảy xuống Chơi vậy đó mà chơi được Xong còn bao nhiêu thằng nữa